Hey everyone, so uh, welcome to our stream. Uh, it's uh, pretty pretty awesome to be here. This is a special stream uh, because we are live uh, from GDC 2019. So I'm Wes McDermott and I am very thrilled to have with me today Javier Perez. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> so, Javier, uh, can you uh, just introduce yourself? Tell us oh, a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yourself. So, my name's Javier. I'm currently a senior material artist at PlayStation, um, part of the VASG department. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much me. I've been in the industry for about eight years now. Um, I went from being a senior materi uh, environment artist into a material artist, and this is first time doing a signature series drop with Algorithmic. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. it's so great that you could be with us <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, for yeah. Substance Days. And uh, yeah, so everyone, we have uh, Javier with us, uh, and he is going to be walking through one of the amazing materials that he created. And uh, before we get going with uh, his material walkthrough, I uh, just wanted to just give a you know a few announcements. So uh, yesterday we had our Substance Days event. Uh, we started with our keynote, and then uh, we had uh, several uh, very, very good uh, presentations that were presented uh, by through various studios. You can read more about uh, you know what was presented uh, on our blog post that we have. Uh, also, yesterday was a, a, a big day for us because we uh, started the open beta launch of Substance Alchemist. And so Alchemist is available for uh, everyone who's on Substance, uh, excuse me, Substance subscription. So uh, you can just go right to your, uh, your uh, algorithmic account and your downloads. You'll see Alchemist is there. Also, if you uh, have downloaded our new Substance launcher, you'll be able to, uh, well, download and launch uh, Alchemist uh, straight from there as well. Uh, another thing, if you are here at GDC, uh, we are having, we have a booth on the exhibit floor. So it's, uh, the booth is um, S1035. So just uh, drop by the booth. We'd love to hang out, talk uh, some substance. We can go through some demos. And actually, Javier, you're going to be with us yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be there tomorrow at 3 p.m., I think. So come by, ask any questions you want. I'll probably have some projects up and go over them a little bit. And yeah, just willing to answer any kind of question you guys have with substance. Oh, so, awesome, man. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, so definitely come by and uh, grab some goodies. We have some Substance shirts, and we also have this amazing bottle substance opener. Substance bottle opener, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you never know when you're going to need to open a bottle. So yeah, now bottle you, soda. Yeah. <laughs> now you have a Substance <laughs> brand in there. Uh, so yeah, come by and check it out. We'd love just to hang out with you guys. Uh, so, so far, uh, before we jump right into the material, Javier, uh, you, you've been with us through the, the event so far and at Substance Days. Uh, so so how, how are things? Yeah, um, Substance Day, this is the first kind of one that I've actually gone as an attendee. Um, it's been really awesome. Uh, the talks were really great. Uh, Jonathan's, uh, in particular, from um, WB, uh, that one was really awesome. And the Marvel Spider-Man one was really cool. Um, but yeah, I've been having a great time. The party was last night. I got to meet a lot of really awesome artists. Um, it was a great event you guys threw. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a it's a it's a ton of fun. Yeah, we really like it. And uh, yeah, a lot of good response at the booth uh, today. Today was our first day on the booth. Uh, had a lot of uh, people come by asking questions. And uh, yeah, the new booth setup we have is 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 nice because we have like four workstations and. Uh, we're not doing any presentations on the show floor. It's it's really just uh, having this come up, have a casual conversation, hang out with us. Uh, we have some of the dev team with us, and um, you know you can just ask questions. Uh, we do live demos right there on the spot. So it's uh, yeah, it's just a fun time. Yeah. Uh, okay, one, one last thing I forgot to mention is uh, we have with us uh, Vincent Go. He is uh, he's actually sitting over here. He's off camera. Hey Vincent. Hey guys. Yeah, <laughs> and so Vincent, uh, he's rocking the uh, chat. So uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, just post them in the chat. Vincent's kind of collecting some some of the uh, questions, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll try to uh, have some time to uh, have Javier uh, go over some of the some answers and check out what, yeah. what you guys are asking. Yeah. All right, so uh, Javier, let's jump into it, man. Okay. Cool. Um, so here, let me just switch uh, my view here. That's good. All right, so uh, Javier, just uh, give us a little idea of what, what you're going to be showing. So this was actually one of the uh, 15 materials that I just recently dropped on Substance Source. Uh, this one in particular is the Space Station Cargo Rack. Um, it includes just kind of a rack that encompasses four different like kind of bags made out of nylon with like some straps on them and uh, some little metal uh, tidbits on there. Um, but yeah, this is this is one of the most this is one of the most funnest ones that I, I had the pleasure to work on, so I'm just going to kind of go over my process, go over the graph, and kind of how I got to this kind of material, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so okay. uh, Javier, a quick question for you. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, when we when we approach uh, like an artist and ask them to do something with uh, a signature series, like um, 
do do you get to pick uh, the topic that you want to do? Yeah, so um, r- right off the bat, I kind of started throwing some ideas with Algorithmic. We went back and forth a few times, kind of, um, I kind of give them like a big list of kind of ideas I wanted, and I kind of, we kind of came down to the space one, because it's something that uh, we haven't, or you guys have not done uh, in Substance. Uh, source so um, I wanted to really capture kind of with all the space talk lately on the news with like the rover on Mars all the uh, SpaceX talk I was super inspired to see uh, like see what I could do with uh, w- uh, space materials yeah oh, awesome yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, and I you know I feel like this uh, goes hand in hand with the uh, that kind of uh, launch that we're having pretty soon with the all women um, first people on the moon kind of the, yeah, the women yeah. on the moon yeah yeah, yeah so. very cool uh, but yeah, so I'm just gonna just turn on my tessellation real quick here. I always love working with tessellation just because it lets me see my forms a little better. Oh, there we go. Cool. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll just get right to it. Um, so uh, right off the bat, the first thing I wanted to do when I uh, started this material was uh, start with the bags. So I basically just started with um, pretty basic shape and I squash it down into kind of this more rectangular um, looking shape. Um, I blurred it a little bit because I wanted to get rid of these uh, super hard edges and give them a nice like subtle curve there. Um, from there I just kind of squash it down a little bit more. Uh, here I took a directional warp um, from a shape, transformed it uh, to the side so it'll give me like two different um, kind of curved edges on the side with the directional warp that gave me this nice kind of blending right here that you, you went from like this kind of straight, super subtle, um, but it makes a big difference in the end. Um, because I wanted this kind of like this curve to go in on each side, so I took a mirror and now we've got like this kind of uh, curve going on in the bag. Uh, from here I took a non-uniform blur and it's it's really subtle because it's at a point sixteen, but it gives you just a, a slight bevel that I didn't have in this other one. Um, and then I leveled it to bring it up, uh, kind of crisp it so it's not too blurry. Um, from here, this is where I added the uh, the beginning of the zipper. Um, and with this, it kind of started with just a basic shape that I squashed down into a line. Uh, I transformed it because I knew I wanted it to be on the top of the bag. Um, I did a slight bevel and I blended it here. Um, uh, with a subtract to get rid of just the area where the zipper would be. Um, but then, uh, let's see, then I started bringing uh, kind of these kind of like zipper clips that you see on most uh, zippers and stuff. Uh, so with that, it was essentially taking that kind of mass that I first subtracted, but then uh, I blended it with this um, tile generator that I kind of just um, got from using the brick pattern and messed with some of the parameters and it was giving me this little zigzaggy line um, I didn't I wasn't really um, concerned about uh, the, the how many there were because I knew I was just going to use it as um, a mask with the blend on here so it just kind of gave me this kind of cool looking zipper effect um, and from there I just kind of overlaid it um, and then did a, a multiply just to bring it uh, down a little bit or sorry, I actually did a gradient linear uh, to give the bag a little bit of like kind of depth to it because from here we we're doing just a straight white and then uh, with this we kind of got this nice gradient from dark to uh, white back to dark with which essentially gives the bag some nice kind of you can see it right here in the uh, tessellation it kind of gives like this nice um, undulation to it um, and uh, here you can kind of see I brought in the the pattern that's in the bags so um, this kind of like stitching that you have it's super subtle but with that it was just a pretty basic tile generator that's been uh, turned up all the way to like 200 I blurred it a little bit and then I safe transformed it to get the nice crisscross pattern um, and then I just uh, I blended it over again and then I did a subtract kind of what I did uh, with with this first one where I was getting this kind of uh, from left to right I wanted to do the same thing but from top to bottom so that's where you're getting kind of this gradient here um, 
here I kind of exaggerated a little bit even more um, and then here is where I added the final zipper on here and with the final zipper it was actually another smaller graph up top uh, started with a basic shape I rotated it and I used um, this is probably one of my favorite uh, nodes that you guys have added kind of in the most recent um, substance designer was the trapezoid node um, that kind of I just squashed it in before I was having to like do a bunch of different transforms to get that um, I rotated it I did a non-uniform blur to get this nice kind of um, curve effect uh, again I transformed it because I wanted it diagonal and I basically took that same kind of shape from the beginning I transformed it did a non-uniform blur and then did a height blend and now we have the little clip with the zipper and from here this uh, zipper clip was actually just hand placed with the transform and kind of just height blended on top here so now we have that kind of nice zipper that you have right here uh, so Javier let me ask you a question yeah, um, yeah. so just a, a few moments ago you were talking about using the tile generator to create that that pattern for mm -hmm. the bag yeah yeah um, and you also use the tile generator for the zipper part too yes correct. so um, how do you how do you like, I guess the question is like how do you know how to do that like did you just play around come up with that yourself or yeah what? I mean it's it's been just a, a an amount of like kind of um, trial and error uh, over the time like I mean I've been using substance for about um, like three years now but yeah I kind of just I know I use tile generator a lot uh, in most of my graphs so I knew that if I just up the amount so much you start getting kind of this uh, almost like tile looking effect and with the safe transform instead of just because I'm sure a lot of people would just take a regular transform and kind of angle it a little bit that actually just breaks your uh, tiling completely but what the safe transform does it actually um, keeps everything nice and tiled so you don't have to worry about the seam from like anything else um, same thing with the the one that we use for just kind of the, the zipper uh, pattern again it's just a bunch of um, trial and error and see what kind of uh, patterns you can get the the tile generator is super super handy when you're trying to just tile something um, and even with these like you can get some really crazy result, results by not even plugging anything into the input just what you guys have provided with like all these different inputs um, that's pretty much it yeah. So it just comes down to just at first for you know for people who are new it, yeah. experiment see yeah, what you yeah, can yeah. come up with and then over time it then goes to experience. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Cause I've it's crazy when you start messing with so many of these different parameters, the kind of effects that you never thought you could even get, or the kind of shapes and the kind of different things. The uh, it, it even like if you just random seed a bunch of different. Um, uh, parameter changes it will give you s so many different like possibilities and different effects that you never thought were possible with this thing so like it does come down to experience but at the same time it's also like just seeing what the tile generator can do on its own without even adding all these extra nodes beforehand because on its own just you can get so many different crazy results with this thing um, let's see so from here um, I added kind of these, they're like these little, uh, based on the reference that I had when I was working on this, uh, you could see kind of my mood board that I had on the, the blog post. We had like kind of these, in, uh, almost like, it's, it's another piece of almost nylon that's kind of sitting on top of the bag, um, almost like straps. And with those, it was pretty, pretty uh, easy. It was just, um, just a basic shape. I non-blurred it. Uh, uniform blur and then kind of transformed it so it starts tiling uh, and then just overlaid it on top um, here is where I started adding kind of these sockets where um, you would put like kind of slips on what's inside the bag and stuff like that um, with those it was just a basic shape um, I leveled it a little bit because I wanted to bring the height value down because I knew as I'm working that I'm gonna need an edge that to be higher on the uh, on the height um, for this for this part um, so I basically took that original shape I edge detected it uh, and then I blended it over uh, I leveled it a little bit just to bring the height values down to where I needed them and then from here it's just kind of using these transforms to hand place them um, instead of having to um, 
instead of having the you know use two transforms and move it over and just have it next to each other I just use a pretty uh, I just use a basic mirror grayscale so it'll move it right next to each other and then from here I kind of just blended it so you get kind of this effect um, here I wanted uh, the bag was feeling kind of kind of straight on top and I wanted to bring kind of almost feel like it was slouching down because I knew the texture was gonna be like uh, presented on the wall I wanted the to the bags to have some sort of weight on them so all I did was I took a basic um, paraboloid I transformed it to the top because that's where I wanted the effect to happen and I used a directional warp with the angle going down because that's the warps gonna be coming down and then I just us like a four intensity and that kind of brings it takes it from we had this kind of straightness to now we have like a little bit of weight on there and from here I leveled the entire thing because it was feeling too um, too kind of uh, the high was feeling too dark which in turn it made the bag kind of seep in way more into these crevices of this metal kind of rack that I wanted to and this kind of effect um, this kind of effect is kind of something that I had I had to go back after the fact once I added these uh, metal cargo racks because I wasn't seeing the effect just quite yet I thought actually this was would do okay um, and from here I took two transforms and kind of uh, placed them where I thought they would uh, need to be um, again I wanted some more um, undulation on the bag so I took a directional warp with just a regular Perlin noise um, and then, uh, yeah, same thing. Did the Perlin noise effect on here. Um, this is actually so with the fold. So the folds um, were a bit a bit of a challenge, but they basically are just a crystal that's histogram that's been histogram scanned, leveled a little bit, blurred, uh, directional warp to give some sort of um, warpness to it, um, I, and then added basically took the same kind of crystals, but made it smaller and then blended it over so we get like kind of these larger folds and then kind of these smaller folds we did a blur and then here I just kind of transformed it or I sorry I, I use this transform to tile it twice and from here I wanted each different um, I wanted each different bag to have different folds and so instead of plugging this kind of same fold pattern into the same one and look kind of the same I took a transform and then I just zoomed it in on certain areas of the uh, of the um, uh, this this old uh, noise or cr crystal, sorry. Um, and right now it is breaking the the uh, it is breaking the tiling, but I knew because it was just going to be overlaid on a bag, I didn't really I wasn't really concerned about the uh, the tiling of the whole texture because it was just going to be uh, secluded to the actual bag. Um, so we're at here right now I did a levels to bring it back up a little bit and uh, everything that I did with these smaller bag or these larger bags were then incorporated uh, into these smaller bags and everything I just showed with the larger bags I did the exact same thing with the smaller bags I even um, incorporated kind of the um, the zipper as you can see was plugged into both these small bags and these large bags um, these folds again were going into the small bags and the large bags so I started using um, kind of the same smaller graphs to get the same effect so I wouldn't have to uh, make it from scratch um, let's see from here uh, again more directional warps just because I wanted the bags to feel more kind of pillowy and puffy um, feel like there was actual folds folds to them so I just did a directional warp with a purline noise um, again, another levels because I'm I'm bringing up the uh, the levels of the bag so they don't get too into the uh, cargo racks. Um, and again, uh, I th these these folds were good, but I wanted some kind of I wanted some more defined folds. I guess you can say um, something that you can distinctly s like tell that they're like folds and stuff like that. Um, so with that, I did just the tile generator. And um, again, this goes back to kind of the craziness of with the, the kind of results you can get. And with this, it's just, um, it's actually just a paraboloid that's been messed with so much in, the, in here where you're starting to get these weird, like long undulation, like 
they're almost like these cylinders that have been stretched and overlapping each other and rotated. Um, and then from here I warped it with a purlin noise to get like, you get these smaller folds, you get these larger folds. Um, blurred that a little bit, leveled it, and then just overlaid it on here. So now you start getting these kind of fold looking shapes on the bags. Um, from here I did a levels to bring the bags down again. And here, um, let's see. Oh, so here I did a histogram scan because I wanted a mask for these bags. Uh, because in the material, you're able, I actually uh, exposed a parameter where you're able to actually hide one or multiple of these bags so you can see the underlying metal to it. So that's why this flood fill is here. Um, it gives you, once you mess the position right now, is kind I can't move it because it's in the parameter, but you're able to take away and uh, kind of see the underlying metal to that. Um, so I'm going to continue here. Let's see. Uh, let's see. So here is where I kind of introduced the metal paneling. And the metal paneling was done pretty uh, easy. It was just, I took, um, I took uh, a tile generator and I kind of moved it to where I needed it to be because I wanted the kind of this row to be kind of smaller to encompass the smaller bags and these to encompass the larger bags. Um, did the same thing. So I wanted a big metal like um, vertical like pole in the middle and these two on the sides. Um, I beveled them just a little bit so they're not as harsh, but it gives you this nice kind of taper so instead of this being like straight up and down it gives you this nice taper um, and then I took a height blend and I blended those two kind of different elements together and so when I talk about different height values and it's always important to kind of keep track of that um, you'll notice that um, this kind of uh, metal piece is actually lower than this uh, higher piece and that's just because the white is higher than kind of this darker element um, and again uh, let's see took a histogram scan I beveled it and then I blended it over again just to get even a more like defined taper just I wanted to exaggerate even more um, and then I took this blend and I kind and I multiplied uh, the old one on there just to kind of bring back this kind of top edge and we like made it a little bit smaller um, so Javier, another question here yeah, for yeah. you. So like, yeah. um, you know, we, we've been, sometimes we have users ask us like, uh, so when you're building up this height map, how do you control like, you know, what level a certain shape or something on? It looks like you're using height blend to do Yeah, that. yeah. I, I feel like height blend um, gives me a lot more control than just regular, um, the just a regular blend in my opinion, because you're able to kind of, um, you have this, uh, where is that? Yeah, you have this kind of high offset and you're almost like seeing it happen live and it's really nice. I feel like you don't have that same control in the blend, like the regular blend. The blend is good for some areas, but whenever I want, I know I want something to be on top or below something, I always go to high blend as my first choice. Um, yeah, oh, good, cool. Um, let's see. So we're here now um, at this kind of section and here I start, I start making these masks uh, because um, they're going to be used later on with the roughness and albedo. Um, so that I can talk to a little bit later. But I wanted this kind of design pattern on the back of the grating for these uh, the rack. So I basically just took a tile generator and I just wanted like some cool like indents of like some circles in there. And I, then I just kind of... Uh, Let's see, I subtracted it, and but I used it. I used this mask, so it only affects um, the back kind of plates behind the bags. Um, so here, you see, this is where I where I actually kind of put the bags and the racks together. So we had like this was just the bags, and again, I used a height blend uh, to kind of tell the racks like how far to be pushed in and out, and. I wanted the actual bags to be kind of more recessed than the actual rack itself. Um, let's see. Um, so, let's see what did I do here. So, I think it's okay. So for these for these bags, I thought they were working pretty well. 
but I wanted to have the like some subtle like um, folds on the edges of them um, and to do that I basically took uh, uh, the mask of the actual bags I edge detected them so that's only gonna affect these kind of the edges of the bags uh, I did a blur I did a normal and the tile sampler has a really cool um, like input inside of it that actually I'm able to plug in this normal and based on the normal angle of like kind of what you plug into the actual thing that you tile is gonna kind of conform to that um, to that uh, rotation so with this I basically just took a Gaussian and kind of stretched it so it gives me like these smaller um, kind of folds but why they're why they're rotated the way they are is because it's using this kind of normal information like you know this is going left and right this is going up and down so that's why these are going the rotation they are um, I blurred it a little bit and then just kind of overlaid it or subtracted sorry um, and then you get these kind of super subtle like folds so you get something like here and then you start getting just some side uh, edge folds um, continuing on um, I wanted uh, I wanted there to be some subtle like uh, some fuzz on the bags themselves so to get that to get kind of this effect it almost looks like the bag is starting to rip um, I basically just took a regular black and white spots I leveled it um, I took another uh, black and white spots 3 I blended it I did some levels on it uh, I did a, a slope blur with the original kind of noise that I used um, and then I took uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, I took uh, a Gaussian uh, that I warped with the with the original um, uh, kind of pattern of the the stitching that was on the bags. Um, so it gives me kind of this like weird effect. Uh, it's almost like I warped the original um, the stitching on the on the front of the bags. And with the blend with the noises that I, I was talking about you get kind of this like this weird like it's it's starting to only show a little bit of the uh, stitching and with that I just blurred it again did a levels uh, I brought in the old slope uh, blur grayscale that I had um, so you get from this it's kind of almost accentuating these kind of like big clumps in there um, uh, this blend shouldn't be here <laughs> Um, and then from here, let's see. I'm just I'm so right now this is actually affecting the entire bag, uh, but I didn't want these kind of um, like sleeves to be affected because I knew these weren't made out of uh, the same material as the bag. This is kind of more just plastic laying on top of it. So I just used it as a mask. So now you can see that they're not being affected. And then I started. Um, and then from here, I just added it at a super low kind of opacity and that gives us like some nice um, kind of effect uh, I think if I turn it up to 25 it will start seeing a little bit more of it yeah so um, yeah. so you get like this kind of um, you get kind of this kind of wear effect where like the the nylon is all nice in here but then you start losing some of it because it's been aged and worn and stuff like that um, so that's kind of the effect I was trying to go for um, from here I did a blur and then uh, I blended it over the top of the background uh, so this kind of setup is what I is what I uh, I use a lot to kind of blend these kinds of shapes so they conform to the bags so these kind of um, these kinds of sleeves or pockets uh, they weren't really working too well with just a regular blend so what I did was I took a shape transformed it uh, blurred it and then um, where's this coming from and then use this kind of mask to uh, that's kind of the same mask for for um, oh sorry actually this is actually the slip that's going to be inside the bag. So I basically just took a shape, transformed it, I blurred it, and um, this goes with a parameter that actually is only um, 
choosing one of the bags with the slips. So that's how you're able to, that's how I was able to just get a single slip. And that is con per controlled by a parameter again. So I'm able to, it, the user is actually able to kind of move the slider and it'll, they'll be like switching from bag to bag. Um, so there's that. And then let's see, laying in belts. Okay. So um, here, based on the reference, uh, these kinds of belts had this kind of indentation here. It's I, I'm not sure if uh, based on the reference it was part of it, but the actual racks themselves have this kind of smaller indentations. Uh, I basically took the histogram scan of that, and then I used um, an earlier mask from the actual belts themselves to kind of subtract it from the actual racks themselves. Um, and the belts are actually just a regular shape just and squashed down. I transformed it um, because I kind of squashed it down in the uh, in the original shape you're gonna see that the tiling breaks so I just move it to the side so now I get this kind of area where I want to buckle. Um, I did a normal uh, uniform blur um, and then I wanted the actual belts to have kind of this ridges on there. Um, I did a gradient and then I tiled it a like hundred times so we get like kind of this interesting pattern um, and then I kind of just multiplied it over so now you start getting this kind of what you would see in a seatbelt or something like that um, again here I just did a, a gradient overlay because I wanted the the belts to kind of have the same silhouette as the bags so you go from a you know a, it's kind of doing this curve shape just like the bags would um, let's see here uh, sorry Oh, so this is super subtle, but um, on the reference, I noticed that the area where kind of where the clip is actually going is a little bit higher than or a little bit lower, but it gives this kind of small effect on here. So you get like you go from this straight kind of belt and then you get this little loop on here. And that's kind of where the actual um, strap connector is actually going to be. Um, most seat belts and stuff like that have this weird stitching on the ends. Um, and for that, I basically just did a, a shape. I did an edge detect, which gives me this uh, kind of crisscross shape. Instead of having to build it, I knew if I did an edge detect on this shape in particular, the pyramid, it would give me kind of a pyramid um, mask. I plugged that into a tile sampler that I used just paraboloid on there, um, and then mess with the settings to for that paraboloid to kind of just start tiling a bunch um, and then this was actually just hand placed uh, on both sides of the um, of the belt uh, and then blended here at the uh, at the very end it's super subtle but it's there just in case um, I think it's more pronounced in the albedo more than anything else um, so uh, Javier we got a question coming in from yeah. the chat and yeah. uh, it's talking about uh, or asking uh, how do you fight against normal map edges over low frequency height in the end? Okay, um, so like, let's see, is he talking about like, um, what, is, uh, what was the question one more time? Yeah, it's, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it was, uh, how do you fight against normal map edges over low frequency height? Okay, over low frequency height. Um, not really sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe the edge is getting a little chunky. Yeah, is make sure that actually the fine details doesn't uh, affect uh, the height map and the, the way it's oscillating. Oh, the oh, oh. So so high frequency detail like that. Um, I know I added this kind of um, this kind of uh, stitching pattern on the bags kind of early on, but if you look at some of the other materials in the series I actually wasn't able to add them into the height because of how much it was affecting the displacement on them so what I did was um, I actually added it uh, towards the end I did another normal map and then I did a normal map combine where you're able to kind of more freely control like how much it's affecting uh, the uh, the normal map in the end so basically um, sometimes when you put like this kind of frequency inside of the height, it's it's gonna be pushing out very extremely. Um, so if I wanted a better control of that, I kind of just take whatever noise I want to tile and just plug it into a normal. 
and then at the end I do a, a normal um, it's either a blender combine might be a blend but it and then I'm able to plug in the tiling pattern that I had and then my overall just height map and I'm able to like even use a mask on here and I'm just able to give like a better control of the opacity so it's not kind of um, affecting the height at all hopefully that uh, answers that question Good, thanks cool um, let's see with so we're still at the strap um, where am I uh, so again in the reference uh, the belts have two different loops um, and these were pretty made just uh, with a basic shape I transformed it um, I mirrored it uh, and this was to get kind of this um, this kind of oval looking shape um, so I mirrored it here and then I just added a shape here I blended it on top so now we start getting this almost capsule looking shape uh, I flipped it did an edge detect did a blur uh, the non-uniform blur has has been uh, helping me a lot lately just because it takes a 2d kind of image that you have black and white and almost gives it like some height information some height depth so you have this kind of like gradient from uh, you know, a darker color to a white back to a uh, darker color um, I leveled it I did a transform and then um, I just uh, added it into the strap um, and that is actually um, after the fact that I made these kind of two uh, clips as well and again it's kind of the same kind of format um, I just did let me see the clip yeah I just did the regular um, the shape I wanted I did an edge detect because it only affected like so here was the shape that I had and that was just I, I took a a cylinder and I sliced it with the transform uh, I did an edge detect so it gives me this and I wanted these edges to be a little round so I don't have like those harsh edges uh, I leveled it a little bit did a transform and again that's just being hand placed on um, the the belt itself same thing with the little clip almost exactly the same kind of uh, method that I did there um, so here um, we have we start working on the actual buckle itself and with the buckle, it's just a shape. I transformed it. I did a, a, a blend with between these kind of two shapes. So now I have these kind of upper kind of portions and I have this lower portion. Um, and the reason like this is kind of lower is because when I blended it in, I just wanted these kind of higher portions to show. So again, that's why I'm using the height blend because it gives me almost a better control of like how far I want the seat belt to go in. Um, I could mess with this height offset and the actual belt would actually go beneath the actual buckle or um, sorry yeah um, let's see for the buckle itself it was just a shape I transformed it I did a gradient um, and then just overlaid it on here so we get kind of this nice almost triangle looking effect on here uh, once you get it like a nice angle right here um, and then uh, the, the belt that I was looking at in the reference has a nice kind of uh, uh, subtraction of like a shape in there. So I basically just took a regular square, moved it into place, beveled it a little bit, and then um, subtracted it from the main belt. Um, so the belts were in there, but I noticed based on the reference that I had is that each belt had kind of this uh, almost extra kind of fabric that they used to tighten it, uh, the actual bag to. So with that, it was, again, it was just, I basically took a shape and I used the same kind of gradient that we had originally with these, um, with the main belt shape. And it was a lot of um, just moving it into place. Each, each one of these straps are being moved into place. And then they're being um, just warped differently with, um, with purlin noises. So they're super subtle. So this one, you, you kind of get this effect, you get this one. Um, so it, they're really really subtle um, and then I did the same thing again after I've uh, angled them again so we get some even more kind of differentiation in the actual straps themselves so we get some longer ones some shorter ones and each one is completely different because um, I didn't want them all to feel the same um, so from here um, it was using I basically used all these different belts and I plugged them into a tile generator and I use the tile generator because it gives you this kind of 
pattern input number, so I was just in, inputting three different uh, belt variations, and right now we have six of them. So I wanted at least to have, for I wanted at least the tile generator to have three different ones to kind of switch out between, so it didn't feel like it was all the exact same belt. So that's why I made three different variations to those. Um, uh, from here, uh, I wanted I wanted to use this kind of. Uh, what's actually doing oh so for here the actual belts were going over the entire graph so this kind of mask is is essentially helping me um, or sorry this this mask actually is helping me get back to the kind of the areas where that kind of uh, little tidbit of the um, uh, the racks that I wanted to subtract earlier that's where that kind of is coming from and where it's actually going um, let's see laying in the belts so the way I laid in the belts so they kind of conform to the actual shape of the um, of the bags themselves was I took a, a mask of the actual belts I blurred it a little bit then uh, I blended it with a gradient um, because I knew with the gradient it'd give me kind of the same undulation and sign the same gradient from like you know you got this nice little curve and then I subtracted it and because I subtracted it um, it's kind of again I'm going back to the whole like knowing where your height values are at the time so if I were to if I had not subtracted this kind of area where the belts were uh, these belts would be so high up and it would actually be over it where with this you're kind of getting this effect where um, you go from like down and then up and it's almost like you're having this kind of tightness on the belts themselves um, so I did that, I did a levels just to bring in these a little bit more so you, the bag and like the rack feel a little kind of almost separated. Um, let's see, these, oh, uh, these metal brackets uh, again was something that I found in the reference and again it's just a shape uh, and I subtracted a, another long shape, um, did some few ovals with the uh, with the tile generator I transformed it to kind of the size I wanted and I uh, just tiled it so it goes from left to right so you actually have it on both sides uh, and then just to, again did a height blend um, I, I knew I wanted this to be the highest point of my material so that's why it's pure white and like the racks have like almost like a subtle gray to them um, let's see uh, from here this is kind of this is kind of the ending point to my height map um, from here uh, this is where I begin my my process to create an albedo and I've I've mentioned this in kind of uh, my last thing with the axe but I use kind of the same um, the same kind of uh, things to get my colors um, with this it was just a bunch of different masks that were that were taken early on so uh, as I'm going through the the process of creating the zippers and the kind of bags I'm always keeping in mind that I'm, I know I'm gonna need these for a color eventually as a mask so they go in the right areas so up here I'm actually just histogramming kind of these exact same shapes that you saw me make for the actual height map but I'm just keeping them at like a constant white always because I know eventually I'm gonna need these as just a plain mask for the albedo um, and as you can see like I'm taking these same masks all over here um, like these zippers over here and I'm just plugging them in, into like these solid colors so we go from um, the the racks which you know this is the mask for that this is the mask for um, kind of the uh, the edges of the um, the kind of the background of the actual um, bags um, again this is kind of the the grate that you see once one of the bags is kind of um, subtracted um, the yellow is actually this kind of mass that early on is it's being done on here uh, way early on here um, again and it's just it's kind of just uh, this is where it's almost like it's you're starting to layer kind of all the mass that you've had done in the earlier process and kind of just slowly adding in colors um, and again, these are all just the, the masks that I'm talking about. These are the belt masks. These, uh, these are just the, these kind of uh, the clips. Um, these were 
these kind of little stitching you got there. And again, it's just a process of combining the colors that you want, the blends, and then just the mess. So right here, I basically have um, almost my final um, kind of albedo. Uh, I wanted to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, dirt and grunge in there. So this is to get that. It, I kind of use this a lot actually. Um, one of my favorite nodes and designers, the dirt node. Um, it's re it's a really nice way to add um, dirt and kind of wear and tear to your material super quickly. Um, and it, all it does, all it needs is just a curvature, an ambient, and a normal map. So I just get that from my height. Um, and then you have these controls. You could do dirt contrast, dirt level, the grunge amount. And it gives you a nice subtle mask that I, again, use as a use as a way to blend in like super subtle. Like for in this instance, I use just a regular gray to get some dirt in there. Um, so you get from something like something clean and like, like this to get like these nice areas of um, wear and tear um, and lastly the one of the last things I do is just add um, a curvature over overlay the entire thing and I think for this it just kind of accentuates some of the edges in the material that you wouldn't have gotten before in the um, in with just without it I guess so um, Hey, Javier, what uh, curvature node do you use for that? Is that curvature smooth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is curvature smooth. Um, I, I found that for some reason, I'm uh, the curvature, like, it gives you, it, it gives you kind of this, it, it's it's good for it in some occasions, but it gives you kind of this weird, um, it's almost outlining it, but this, it almost gives you, like, the volume of, like, an ambient occlusion almost with, like, these so many different variations of the grays where this is almost giving you like a straight outline of the actual shapes. So I tend to use Curvature Smooth a lot more again. And uh, same thing when I'm actually using the Dirt node, um, I actually plug in a Curvature Smooth as well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, these HSLs and levels uh, were just done at the very end for Substance Source. It's so the user can actually control the hue, the variation and lightness of these materials. Um, for the metalness and the way I break up my surface, uh, surface, sorry, um, it's the exact same way that I just explained with the albedo, because I'm using the exact same mass that I use with the albedo, but instead of like all these different color combinations, I'm literally just using the um, the black and white to show where I want the metal to show up, and then uh, with the roughness, uh, again, it's just the values that I want for the light reaction. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of where uh, I've gotten so far with this material. So um, lastly, I guess uh, towards the end of it, I wanted to add some super uh, subtle scratches on the um, on the rack itself, and that's just done with a right like pretty basic grunge map that I kind of just blended over the entire thing. Um, uh, I basically take the ambient occlusion. Um, and then blend it over a grunge map. I invert it. I did a levels, so you're starting to get these highlights. Um, I blended it over uh, the ambient occlusion with that has been leveled, and then I did a histogram scan. Uh, so you start getting kind of this almost like mask of it's starting to take away. But I didn't want it to affect <laughs> the bag, so I just used the mask that was on the um, on the uh, the racks themselves. Um, and again, this is kind of a, one of those other masks that I talk about where how the color and the roughness and the metal are being applied. And um, yeah, I guess that's that's the, the end of the material. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing, <laughs> yeah. man. Uh, just a, a few questions that came in. One of them was about, uh, ma I guess, management of your graph. Mm -hmm. So like uh, beyond the comment boxes, um, mm -hmm. you know, for management, do you have any tricks to keep control over the overall management of the the nut lines yeah um, so this one probably wasn't the best example of kind of my management but there's some in the series of the 15 where you can see I kind of went a little like almost way too uh, crazy on far as far as management but the things I learned the most me personally um, I didn't do with this one but I am constantly I don't care if it's like if this subtle angle I don't uh, even how far it is I will always go in take the middle point and kind of just move it so I know I hate seeing like kind of these angles all over the place yeah. um, for me personally like not on this one uh, but there's other ones where I'm 
constantly taking this middle point of the uh, the graph edges and kind of just moving them to exactly where they are so a lot of the times when you open up my graphs uh, you start seeing stuff like this where it's just uh, straight up and down um, stuff like that um, and yeah just constantly comment boxing everything and a new one that I'm kind of using a little bit more uh, nowadays is uh, actually breaking up your graph into different subgraphs so I could essentially take this large bags uh, put it in the new graph and just kind of import it back in here if I if I think the graph is getting too big or it's getting too expensive that takes a little weight off of like how many nodes you're managing and stuff a great example of that one is inside of the um, inside of the uh, the one one of the materials I made has all this the different oh the switchboard on there so each little piece of the switchboard is actually uh, its own graph so there's about 15 small graphs that contain knobs buttons and uh, that one's a great example to kind of open up and see how I managed to import the smaller graphs into the larger graph oh, okay yeah yeah um, so so lastly just asking a, a little about about your material presentation so like you know once you've created something um, mm -hmm. uh, like an awesome material like this like what you know what's your what's your process for presenting this like rendering it you yeah, know? yeah yeah um let me see can i oh yeah i, can't yeah, I don't yeah. think we can yeah i don't <laughs> yeah, think we can i wanted actually, yeah. i wanted to open the blog post but um uh -huh. so with the rendering i always use marmoset i love using marmoset but for me personally because i've kind of uh been rendering a lot lately and all these materials i kind of have my own s setup file that's in marmoset with the lights and just the basic plane and uh, it's always the exact same setup for my stuff where I kind of always have this nice marmoset file laid out with the plane in there, the lights that I kind of already like. That's why some of my renders kind of look, uh, kind of look a little bit the same. Uh, but once I kind of get that stuff in there, then it's just moving the lights around, changing the uh, HDRs around, um, and yeah, uh, you almost. Try to find interesting shapes to render your materials, and um, I know a lot of people love the spheres. A lot of people love the planes, but uh, on the engine, you can see that I kind of just use like a tapered cylinder to make it feel like like a rocket engine. Um, that's one thing that I think is really cool is when um, you take kind of these super generic, uh, simple shapes and kind of almost build your material around it. Kind of like you think of like, okay, this would look cool on a shape, this specific shape, and kind of build your material around that. Oh, okay. okay, yeah. Here, so I'll go ahead and move this back up out of our s screen here. There we go. Uh, <coughs> all right. So uh, Javier, thank you, man. That yeah, was yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a yeah. magnificent walkthrough. Um, yeah, the the uh, the collection on Source looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, definitely, I think that we there was a video that we played during the keynote that kind of showcased your materials. Yes. Um, um, did you make that video? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, that's again all in uh, Marmoset. Uh, I basically took the kind of all the still images that you see in the blog post. Are the the clips are actually the exact same shots I used for the videos. I'm just kind of rotating the uh, the camera around. I'm rotating the HDR, the sun around. So it's um it's really easy once you have uh, single images. Like it's really easy just to kind of move the camera around, move the light around. You, you kind of get these nice videos where you can see the sun go over the kind of surface of your material, and it gives you a nice uh, an extra like piece of presentation that you could post on ArtStation or something like that. Yeah, and so like the, the the lighting, the way it kind of models the shapes and forms helps to really bring yeah, out yeah. all the hard work. That yeah, you put yeah, into definitely. It. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I think it's super cool when um, you're like, uh, yeah, like the engine. Like, I I knew I was like, hmm, I want to do this engine, but I I think the only way it would really look like an engine if as I put it on a cylinder, like a tapered cylinder. I think it sells the material a lot more. Yeah. If I were to, there's some actual renders of it of just on a wall, and it kind of doesn't give the same effect almost so um, yeah <laughs> yeah amazing so uh, well thanks again Javier uh, for oh wait a second I think Vincent has a question for us here uh, let's see are there any custom nodes that you think are a must-have custom nodes um, I've talked about this one quite a bit but I love uh, the uh, the point curve system inside of substance designer it's uh, it's one you can find on gumroad I used it on my battle uh, on my uh, axes to make the really swirly kind of designs on there that is kind of uh, probably the only custom node that I kind of use a lot um, for this series in particular um, I didn't want to use 
uh, any like kind of outsource or like kind of uh, outside nodes just because I wanted the user to have full control inside and not have to like download all this extra stuff. So um, oh, yeah. I try I try to make everything just ba ba base package what you guys are given. So. Um, but yeah, that's the only one that I kind of can think of at the top of my head. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, all right, yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll close it out here. Um, again, everybody, thanks for joining us. And uh, if you're at GDC, uh, come by the booth, check us out. Like we said, uh, Javier, you're going to be. Yeah, I studio. mean, I'll be at the booth tomorrow. So come by, ask me any questions. Um, I'll probably be showing some projects. Uh, but again, uh, my art station, all my info is on the blog post. I'm pretty good at replying to emails and messages. So any substance. Uh, questions you have just message me email me and i'm happy to help all right yeah. awesome man so uh looks like we'll go ahead and stop the stream here uh we're gonna head over to the art station party so that'll be fun we got to meet up with the rest of the yeah. team uh, yeah yeah, yeah definitely. see see what those guys are up to so uh hey vincent thanks for hitting the channel thank you yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right thanks everybody and we'll see you on the next stream take see care ya.